Good afternoon and welcome back to another round of Steel Connect webinar. I'm Rocky and will be your host today to talk about fire tests for external cladding systems. What do you need to know about fire tests for external cladding? Well, let me start by sharing a horrific fire incident happened in the UK. It was close to midnight of 14 June 2017 when Mr. Bahelu Kabedi just got back home from work. Feeling exhausted, Mr. Kabedi went to bed immediately after having a wash up. Just as he was about to fall deep into sleep, an alarm went off from within the apartment. He jumped out of his bed and walked towards the direction of the alarm. As it turns out, he came from the key, uh, his kitchen, which is separated by a door. Just as he opened the kitchen door, a gush of smoke had caught Mr. Kabedi by surprise. When he opened the door, he saw vividly the smokes originated from the fridge freezer unit, as shown in this picture. And he quickly came to his senses and dialed 999. Turns out the fire started from the freezer fridge. Instinctively, Mr. Kabedi ran out of his apartment and started knocking on his neighbor's door to alert them of potential fire issues so they could evacuate from the building. Now, Mr. Kabedi lived in the fourth floor and he had started filming the fire incident of his kitchen from the ground floor after his evacuation. As you can see, the fire had developed in 1.05 a.m. and it had a burst out of the kitchen window at 1.09 a.m. The firefighters entered into Mr. Kabedi's kitchen at 1.14 a.m. to put out the fire, but it was already too late. The fire had spread out to the top floor within 20 minutes of bursting out of the window and started to spread horizontally around the building, creating an inferno, an unstoppable inferno. So this is the Grenfell Tower fire incident, which it had taken 72 lives. Upon experts' investigation, the original cause of fire could uh, be from the fridge freezer located near the window. And once the fire burst out of the window, the fire spread was caused by the external cladding material. But it was found to be aluminum composite material made with polyethylene filler sandwich in the middle, as shown in the picture. We know that fire incident is not unfamiliar in Malaysia. In fact, there are some familiar cases of some similar cases of fire spread on external cladding, just like the Grenfell Tower, such as the Papustakan KL, which happened in year 2016, prior to the Grenfell Tower incident. There was limited news coverage on this at that time because there was no casualty. However, based on reporting done by My Metro TV, the fire was initiated from welding work on the roof that sparked fire on the polystyrene fiber of the cladding, external cladding. The fire quickly developed and had caused some damages such as cracked windows and part of the external cladding had burned up completely. A more recent fire incident was seen on the KWSP building in P Petaling Jaya. Based on the STAR online reporting stated by the Deputy Director General of uh, Fire and Rescue Department, Initial investigation found that the fire started from first floor uh, was due to the maintenance work on the building exterior. As you can see from these two pictures of before and after, the fire did not just spread upward, it also spread laterally. Based on the fire and rescue department, the external cladding system did not meet the fire safety requirements. And the reason for this fire spread of the external cladding system is because it contains something called polyfoam material in the cladding, as reported by FMT News. So with that in mind, I would like to tell you more about different types of fire tests done on both individual building materials, as well as on a complete external cladding systems, referenced as repeat standards BSA414. So if you haven't already know, BSA414 is a new test method for external cladding system, which has been enforced by BOMBA since last year. 
But first, let me tell you about the fire test on building materials. You might wonder, why do we still talk about fire tests on individual materials? Well, these individual building material tests would indirectly affect the results of the fire test of the external cladding system. So let's start with the most common requirement asked by Bomba, class zero or class O. Did you know that class O requires you to test the building materials to British standards ES476 part six and part seven? Or have you wondered what it means for material to be classified as class O? So today, uh, I will give the explanation to you. Firstly, on BS476 part six test. So this test itself is meant to determine the fire growth of on the exposed surface. So the diagram shown here is actually a test setup where it is a small burning chamber. And uh, pointed out here is the thermocouple or thermometer in layman's term. And it is placed at the chimney area where the temperature of the air will be measured and calculated uh, for the test results. For this setup, there is a horizontal gas burner, which will be uh, emitting flames to simulate fire exposure to the surface of the building material. And for your better understanding, the building material, which is uh, in these uh, tests are called test specimens, is placed here. Based on the standard, the test specimen can be a flat surface or composite material or even an assembled system with cavity space in between. However, do note that this test, uh, the, the test to be carried out will only be on the surface because the interior layers will not be exposed to any of the flames during the test. The temperature measured from the thermocouple will be uh, calculated based on the specific set of formulas to give results of fire propagation index and sub indices. What you see here is an example of test results on pre painted steel. So, what does these indices represent? I'll tell you later how it is related to class O. Moving on to the S476 part 7 test. This test is a test to determine the flame spread on the lateral surface of the building material. Just now, part six was on a vertical surface and then spread on upward. But 476 part seven is to simulate fire spreading laterally. So the scope again uh, of this test only determines the surface spread of flame and does not take into account of the core material. So here's an, a view of the test setup. Once the radiant heat is stabilized, which as you can see is the, the big, large, uh, growing surface. Uh, once it is stabilized and ready, the sample will be ro rotated to 90 degrees towards the radiant heat. And initial fire will be ignited at the start. What you witness is a video posted on YouTube by uh, Bearing Tool Fire, where it shows the fire being spread laterally with the help of the radiant heat. If the surface apparently facilitated such a fire spread. For this test, we'll be able to determine the rate of flame spread on the building material. So, the test itself will be restricted to one, the, the observation will be restricted to one, one and a half minute. And also the extent of flame spread, which over here will be observed for the whole duration of the fire. So the, the fire will not be intervened and then we'll let it to burn all the way through or let it subside. So if the building, if the building material is classified as class one, as classified in BS476 part 7 test, it means that the flame did not spread more than 165 millimeter within one and a half minutes from ignition. And the fire subsided within the one and, uh, 165 millimeters range without further intervention. To give you a visual aid, the samples you saw earlier had some lines drawn on it. It's meant to provide visual judgment for evaluation. And if the building material is classified as class one, it means the fire, which start, start out on the right-hand side, 
did not spread beyond the red box area. In the report, here's how it will look like. For a typical pre-painted product or pre-painted steel, we observe that there's no spread of flame as the paint layer mass is quite insignificant. The paint layer itself, uh, how thick it is, also would determine how easy it is to spread the flame. All in all, in order for the building material to be classified as class O, it should meet both BS476 part 6 criteria as stated here, where the fire propagation index should be less than 12 and the sub index uh, should be less than 6, while also meeting the BS476 part 7 test uh, classification of class 1. Combining these two, you get class O classification. So generally, pre-painted covered steel is classified as class O. But do ensure that you get this classification uh, cl clarified when you look for any building material. However, I would like to note one thing. BS476 Part 6 and Part 7 only test for the surface on the cladding. For example, in this diagram shown here, if the test specimen is a composite material, like a panel, only the material one is tested, while material two and three are not tested, will not be exposed to the test. So let me show, show you a scenario. If the building material two can catch on an or spread fire, the test based on BS476 uh, part six and part seven will not be able to detect it because it is shielded by material one. That's the limitation for class O. And how about combustibility tests? Most often, I hear the reference of class O to non-combustible material. In fact, there is a difference. Here, you can see the combustibility test is referred to BS476 Part 4 test. Okay. Part 4 will require a specific preparation of sample. As you can see here, it is a stack of coated steel to make up a cube. And the cube dimension is 40 by 40 by 50 mm height. The sample needs to be prepared uh, such, in such dimension because it will be placed into a specific basket where the whole thing will be placed into a furnace later on. You also notice that there's a drilled hole in the sample, on the sample. This is meant to place a thermocouple where it will measure the internal temperature of the material. Another thermocouple will also be placed near, uh, into the furnace adjacent to the test specimen. The furnace setup itself looks something like this in this diagram. Also, the furnace temperature will be stabilized at 750 degrees Celsius before the sample, the test specimen is placed into the furnace for 20 minutes. And during that 20 minutes, we'll observe both the temperature change measured by the two thermocouples, as well as the internal uh, observation, whether there's any flames. So in order for the test specimen to be classified as non-combustible, first, the two criteria are both measured temperature in the test specimen and adjacent to the uh, specimen should not exceed 50 degrees Celsius from the initial stabilized temperature of 750 degrees Celsius, which means less than 800 degrees Celsius. Another criteria is that there should not be any visible flame within the furnace that lasts more than 10 seconds. The reason for these two uh, criteria to be set up is because they want to ensure that the material itself does not let out additional energy or energy, additional flame uh, that could quantify as combustible. So for BS476 part four, three valid test specimens results will be recorded. And typically the test report will be uh, stating whether the test specimen is considered non-combustible or not, or combustible. And in general, unpainted coated steel will be non-combustible. So coming back to the composite panels, I've mentioned earlier, the core material, however, small it may be, can be tested according to BS476 part four to determine its combustibility. If it's not combustible, 
the chances that you will have fire spread on the external cladding system will be significantly lower. That means individual component like building material two and three, if let's say these are classified as non-combustible, there's a low chance that your external cladding system will spread fire. So the next test, which is the uh, new fire performance test on complete external cladding system, is called BS8414. This, this test was introduced after the major incident at KWSV building. Just to give you a clear perspective, this is how BS8414 test looks like. The reason this test uh, is uh, enforced to ensure that the complete external cladding system has been put in uh, this rigorous test and pass all the criteria before it is being used in actual building. This includes the cavity space, which if exposed to fire, could potentially draw the fire upward, uh, essentially acting like a chimney effect. So let me tell you about some of the potential fire spread mechanism. As you can see from this diagram, first, the fire could start from internal, right, internal building, just like the Grenfell Tower incident. Or it could uh, start uh, from external fire, just like the Perkusakan KL or KWSP, where maintenance from that was done on exterior uh, building. If the fire is allowed to break out of the, build, uh, of the window, or develop further, will expose the external cladding with high amount of heat or high amount of fire. And if the uh, external cladding allows for fire spread via external surface or even the core material or the cavity space, it will spread rapidly upward, causing secondary fire on another floor, potentially creating an inferno, just like the Grenfell Tower. Do you know that this test itself is on note a non-load bearing external cladding system. And the cladding is expected to be locked onto either a masonry wall or on mount steel structure. So for BS8414, it is divided into two parts. BS8414 part one for setup and method of test on external cladding locked onto the masonry wall. For BS8414 part two, is for setup and method of test on external cladding locked onto the mount steel structure. Either you are going for tests according to part one or part two, the final layout is very similar, where you have a main phase, a wing phase, and a combustion chamber which simulates fire coming out of a window or an opening of a building. You see that the height of this setup uh, is more than eight meters. And it is a fire test, as it is a fire test, thermocouples are also used in order to measure temperatures at different parts of the cladding. Over here, you'll see that the thermocouples are placed at two different levels, where level one is 2.5 meters above the combustion chamber, and level two is five meters above the combustion chamber. The thermocouples are not only placed in different levels, it is also placed in different sections of the cladding to make sure that internal temperature rise is also measured. The thermocouples will be categorized as internal and external thermocouples. If the component or cavity space in the cladding is more than 10 millimeters in thickness, then a thermocouple will be placed in the middle of that component or cavity. So in this case that uh, I'm showing you, this specific diagram, the internal thermocouple is placed in the middle of the cavity and uh, the external uh, thermocouple on the surface of the external cladding. And this is how the thermocouple will be seen from the external surface. To explain more in depth about this test method, I would like to reference to the test that we have done in collaboration with Sirim and some of our customers. This specific uh, set has the test criteria as required by BOMBA. So just for your information, the setup did not have any insulation, uh, no fire stop, or even aluminum foil. It was purely a layer of pre-painted corrugated steel sheets locked onto the top head. This is how it looks like before the corrugated steel sheets is installed. 
And there's also, uh, I mean, for this specific case, the cavity space in between the masonry wall and the external cladding is about 205 millimeters. And the external cladding is made out of 0.42 mm thick corrugated steel sheets fastened onto the top head. The fire source is made of wood and will be allowed to burn continuously for 30 minutes. Here's the time lapse to show how the fire test is carried out for the first 30 minutes and will be extinguished at the 30 minutes mark if nothing failed. Then followed by another 30 minutes of observation. So once the fire is put out, they will wait for another 30 minutes for uh, any uh, unexpected observation. Of course, if the fire spread rapidly and failed uh, some of the criteria or critical criteria, then early termination of the test is possible. The test shown here only lasted for uh, less than eight minutes. And this specific cladding is said to have a, a very similar characteristics as the Grenfell tower cladding. And over here, you can see all sorts of uh, breaking down of the cladding. And eventually, before the eight minutes point, uh, early termination of the test is done to make sure that it does not endanger any further of the of other building component within the test site. So for this segment, I will not uh, cover which building needs to be tested and which one does not, as the guideline is yet to be clearly established. Okay, however, I'll shed some lights to how these criteria are evaluated and show you some of the past and fail observations and some of the lessons learned. So here are the criteria. So these criteria are co-developed between Bomba and Sirim. And in total, there are actually six criteria which together will determine whether the specific external cladding system is able to pass to be used as external cladding. First criteria is external fire spread. So this will be measured based on level two external thermocouples. In order for the cladding to pass, the external surface should not allow fire spread coming from the combustion chamber. To be more precise, all the external thermocouple at level 2 should not have continuous temperature reading of more than 600 degrees Celsius for 30 seconds within the 15 minutes of fire or ignition point. Here's the specific test done in collaboration with Siri. You can see that the fire at its peak time did not reach level 2 height. Upon closer inspection after the test, we saw that the fire only reached level one, which is around 2.5 meters above the combustion chamber. And this is the temperature reading of level two external thermocouples. One of the thermocouples, as you can see here, reached 600 degrees Celsius briefly and did not last more than six, uh, 30 seconds. And bear in mind, this one was uh, done without any fire stop. It was just uh, the corrugated steel sheets with a top hat and the cavity space. Now here is another test of typical co uh, composite panels that was witnessed in Syria. Within 10 minutes from starting the fire, it had developed upward and it seemed to be reaching level two height. This is classified as failed for external fire spread criteria. So up to the next criteria, which is the internal fire spread. So this will be measured based on the level two internal thermocouples as shown in the diagram. And the criteria itself is very similar to the first external fire spread criteria, right? Where uh, precisely all the internal thermocouples at level two also should not have continuous reading of more than 600 degrees Celsius for 30 seconds within the 15 minutes after the fire started. Okay. So the reason why they actually do this uh, measurement is because the internal fire, uh, internal surface should not help with the fire spread coming from the combustion chamber. Here we refer back to the test that we did in collaboration with Siri. From the observation of cladding after the fire test, we did not see any failure or detachment of the cladding. Hence, the internal temperature is significantly lower 
as there's no fire drawn upward from the cavity space. From the diagram or from the graph, you can see that the highest temperature was recorded close to 300 degrees Celsius. And on to the third criteria of visible flame. This evaluation will be based on visual and if the fire is seen exceeding the confined space of the test setup, either laterally as shown in the diagram or on the top of the test setup for more than 30 seconds continuously, then it will fail this criteria. This is likely to happen if the fire is allowed to develop within the cavity space as shown here. Just to share some insights, after ignition, the temperature near the combustion chamber constantly reached above 600 degrees Celsius within the 30 minutes time frame. Therefore, it is especially critical to pay more attention to detailing, such as the flashing and capping. Again, referring back to the same test that we had uh, in collaboration with Serum, flashing was secured near the combustion chamber to prevent any flame from coming through to the cavity space. And it will be critical for the flashing to stay intact to shield the fire from going through. And upon closer inspection after the fire test, we found that any coating on the steel surface has been burned off. But the steel base of uh, the flashing and the cladding, as well as the steel fasteners, was secured properly onto the structure. So this can be explained by the higher melting point of steel, which is more than 1,400 degrees Celsius. Hence, we did not see any visible flame exceeding the confined space for the entire test duration. In contrast, typical composite panels normally made of aluminum might be melted in this temperature. Therefore, you might want to consider how to address this inherent limitation. For the next two criteria, it will be confined to, co to the collapse zone, which is defined as the area in front of the combustion chamber with a dimension of 2.4 meters width and 1.2 meters depth. Because of the intense fire, there's a possibility that the panel's locking mechanism might be affected. So for the fourth criteria, there should not be components of the cladding longer than 500 millimeter and 200 grams in weight falling outside of the collapse zone. Otherwise, this will create another roadside safety issue or even affect the firefighter's effectiveness. Aside from mechanical performance, there should not be any burning debris or pool fire developed outside of the collapse zone. This is especially dangerous if there's any combustible material adjacent to the building or right below the building. To show you an example of what burning debris look like, I've found a video recorded on the night of Grenfell Tower incident. This burning debris could also cause fire spread uh, in the downward direction of the external cladding. So you can see the debris is building out, uh, you know, from the burning of the external cladding. And lastly, on the criteria of fire burn through, this is only relevant for external cladding locked onto mount steel structure. So the reason behind this criteria is to ensure that the cladding will not give way to the fire, so that whoever or whatever located behind the cladding will not be at risk of fire exposure. Therefore, if your cladding is locked onto steel structure, then it will be critical for the cladding not to uh, be detached or melt from the fire. With that, I would like to summarize the new test criteria for external cladding system as referenced as a BS8414. Of course, I mentioned that uh, first two, external and internal fire spread, which measures the external or internal temperature at level two height, which is around five meters above the combustion chamber. So it should not have a measurement of temperature more than 600 degrees Celsius for 30 seconds continuously. Next is on visible flame, which gauges the fire spread via the cavity space. And it's critical at, uh, to look at uh, the detailings and the materials durability in terms of the melting point. 
and mechanical performance, burning debris, and full fire, which talks about any fallout or burning substances that could potentially cause more damages within the confined space. And lastly, on the fire burn through, where if the cladding was locked onto the steel structure, then you have to consider something that would not melt or allow the fire to burn through uh, because it will create some issue for the internal dwellers. So moving on to the next um, session, which is on the question and answer session. What are the, what are the requirement or test certificate a sealant needs to fulfill to be bomba proof for use in external cladding system? So, so in, in this specific case, um, we actually will refer back to whatever test that was uh, announced. So if let's say the sealant by itself, uh, it will be on the uh, material a building material testing of BSA476. Uh, so whether uh, it is valid to be tested against or non combustibility or non-fire spread, that one I think you have to consult with the tester or bomba. Because uh, at the end, they will they, they, they face these questions uh, day in and day out. So they will know which kind of test is most suitable for uh, this case, especially on the sealant. So the next question, is there any standard design for external cladding system? So um, in terms of the external cladding system uh, so far, because this test has been introduced last year, and uh, so far, there was not much discussion going on, but we do hear that you know there are systems that are being tested uh, by Sirim, and um, all of the system will vary uh, depending on the type of material used and even the type of cavity, uh, the the amount or the thickness of the cavity space. So uh, there is to to answer your question, there is no standard uh, design for external cladding system. So it is still quite fragmented in terms of uh, you know, the design. And of course, uh, for, for us, we are just sharing our experience based on the test that we have done for a specific uh, case. And um, I hope that itself will give you some, some insight. So what is the difference between class O and non-combustible material? Okay. So in terms of um, Class O and non-combustible, we do uh, hear people always referencing Class O as non-combustible material. So uh, to share you, um, based on what I've presented, non-combustible means that it should pass the S476 part 4 test. But then part, uh, Class O is not uh, based on this BS476 part 4. Whereas it is actually based on BS476 part 6 and part 7 tests, which test on the fire spread on the surface of the building material. So it can mean that the building material itself will catch fire, but it will not spread flame on the surface. Okay? But it does not mean that the fire is non-combustible. So in order for, for you to determine which is the requirement for your external cladding, I will add that um, typically for external cladding, just the external surface, part 6 and part 7 would be sufficient. However, because in, in the market there are various systems where uh, the composite material could be, uh, non uh, could be combustible. Therefore, this test was introduced, this new test of PS8414 was introduced to make sure that uh, the test itself give a holistic view of uh, how the complete external cladding system will work. So I hope that answer your question. So where can I get this new BS8414 requirements? Okay, so um, for this uh, new BS8414 requirement, uh, you can always uh, refer back to us because so far we haven't found uh, the document being uploaded by Sirim or by Bomba on the website. So uh, if you uh, want to refer this uh, to this document, we are able to share you. Uh, we are in the process of uh, getting approval, of, I mean, getting consent from Sirim to post this document on our website. So, you, I mean, you don't have to just, you know, send us an email, you can just download it uh, in the future. 
So we'll share it out after this session. So the next question is, does this test, is this test required for all the projects? So uh, with this, we actually asked around uh, with some of the uh, architect or even uh, project owners. So apparently Bomba has uh, sent out letters to uh, project owners or even building owners that have external cladding that they would think is valid to test. So if you have received any uh, Bombas alert or Bombas letter saying that your external cladding needs to be tested, then you, you can uh, you know, consult us or consult Sirium further. Because uh, currently in uh, ASEAN region, um, only Malaysia is uh, having this uh, test set up uh, of BSA414, meaning only Malaysia or more specifically, Sirium is able to conduct this external fire Cladding, external cladding system tests on fire performance. So you can always uh, approach Sirium on this. And uh, in terms of the costs, um, so far, it, I mean, there's a large amount of costs that you have to incur if, let's say, it is required for you to do, conduct these tests. So if, let's say, you are still in the designing stage or in the budgeting stage, I would encourage you to approach Bomba uh, to, to clarify further whether your cladding needs to be tested according to this new standard. Otherwise, then uh, you can go for those uh, systems that has been tested uh, according to these standards and passed. Or rather, you can, uh, you know, if let's say your building is completed, uh, according to what I heard, Bomba will also send a letter to you for building that has been completed in recent years for like three years, five years or 10 years, and they, they will uh, follow progress. And uh, once you receive the letter, you can always go back to, uh, you know, uh, Bomba or Sirim for further clarification. So the next question, is there a valid period for BS or so, uh, sorry, 8414 test report? So uh, this BS 8414 test report, so far we have not heard of any validity uh, uh, duration for this test report, but uh, there is a certain um, limitation. So for example, for manufacturers who wish to uh, get their uh, cladding certified uh, or so-called tested according to this BS8414, then uh, they, are, they have to set a few parameters. For example, if the cladding system has a range of, say, uh, cavity in between 100 millimeters 100 millimeters to 200 millimeters. And if they wish to offer this standard product to the market, then they will have to test uh, their cladding system with both 100 mm cavity space and 200 mm cavity space. So in order for them to test both uh, and pass both, that means that you know, any cavity space in between 100 and 200 mm will be uh, automatically considered passed for this test. And same with the insulation layer. So if the insulation layer itself is, for example, 10 or 20 mm uh, thinness and then 50 mm thickness, for example, then uh, the manufacturer or rather the building owner can have the specific cladding system tested. But for manufacturers, if let's say they wish to offer uh, the cladding system with insulation off uh, ranging from 20 millimeter to 50 millimeter, then they'll have to test for the minimum thickness and the maximum thickness of the insulation with the cladding system in place. And if they pass both, that means the any insulation thickness in between 20 and 50 millimeters thick would be automatically considered passed. Is there a relation to BMT and test results? Uh, example, 0.42 mm versus 0.47. Would a thicker BMT be better? Okay, so uh, in terms of the thickness by itself, uh, it will not really affect the uh, fire performance for this specific case, uh, BS8414. Uh, but in terms of the mechanical strength, uh, I will foresee that is certain advantage if you have a thicker material. Of course, having a thicker material uh, you also have a more consistent or more uh, straighter uh, appearance. So the next question, is there any measurement for the 
toxic value in this class O fire testing. If no, this toxic value may cause by fire the test by which class. Okay, um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, the scope of this class O testing is based on BS476, part 6 and part 7. And based on these two standards, there was no measurement on toxic level that is being emitted uh, when the building material is being burnt or if the building material uh, have any fire spread. So the only scope of these two st uh, test standards is that they only test on the uh, ability of the building material to have any surface spread of flame, both vertically as well as laterally. And in terms of the toxicity, uh, we have not heard of any uh, requirements yet. And uh, in terms of the standard, it is not part of uh, this discussion, so I uh, do not have any information on that. But definitely you can uh, seek out to, to ask Sirim whether there's such test or whether it is a concern uh, if let's say there is any burning of material. So what is the code of practice or reference for projects in Singapore where Euro codes are based on for the fire design of cladding or structure? So, um, okay. Uh, with regards to Singapore, uh, we have actually uh, gotten a requirement that you know all the building materials should be certified. Uh, I mean, certified meaning certified by a certification body to Class O, meaning uh, they will actually conduct surveillance tests and um, you know give you a certificate of whether your material by itself has been certified to Class O. So the requirements so far in Singapore is that it should be certified to class O. And uh, if let's say you have it in uh, a part form, which means a non combustible is even better. But linking that to uh, Eurocode, uh, there is actually a uh, so-called uh, close equivalent of British standards with Euro class or Euro code. But uh, so far, um, you can actually cross-reference both. So I can't uh, really tell uh, whether, you know, uh, which your code is, uh, it should be based on. But there's a specific standard, if I recall correctly, is EN13501-1. Uh, and you can always refer to, Singapore has a very good system where all these documents are actually uploaded in the fire department, which is SCDF. Uh, uh, website and the documents itself is completed and uploaded on, on their website. So you can always refer to it. So what's the difference between class O and class one? Okay, so uh, just now I'm uh, explaining earlier that class O is actually based on two standards, BS 476, part six and part seven. So under these two test standards, uh, there are certain criteria that you need to meet for both in order for you to classify the material as class O or class zero. Uh, but class one, it only needs to be tested for ES476 class seven. So the maximum or so-called the highest uh, standard or the best requirement uh, in ES476 class seven is class one. But in order for you to, to be classified as class zero or class O, then you need to have additional tests of BS476 part 6. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, there's a certain uh, calculation in place that uh, would convert the test uh, data into uh, the fire propagation index and also the sub-index or indices. And based on these uh, two uh, test uh, uh, standards, uh, if let's say you meet a certain criteria, then it will be classified as class O. If the cladding are uh, used as vertical fins, a uh, space, say one meter apart, will this test still be required? Okay, uh, I think uh, you hi highlighted something very, uh, very interesting and also uh, something that we are still trying to get answer from our regulators. Uh, in terms of uh, 
for 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 the this session itself, we did not touch on which type of building or which type of cladding uh, can uh, should be tested or should require to be tested based on the new fire test requirement, which is PSA four one four. But uh, based on our observation, if let's say uh, the cladding itself has vertical fins and uh, it's only, I mean, there's a space in between, there's gap in between, then it defeats the purpose of uh, doing this test because, uh, you know, fire would have been through. But definitely um, the best department to refer back to is Bomba. And um, we are still following up with Bomba to get a clearer picture. And um, I hope uh, once we get this, we can share back with uh, you guys on what is the requirement. Can we advise on the horizontal and vertical fire barrier installation for external cladding? I, I believe what you're saying is the uh, fire stop or so-called uh, the barrier. So this one, I, I think um, I can't really answer because uh, again, it comes down to specific designs and uh, specific uh, cladding systems. Uh, definitely, if let's say that design uh, itself uh, is has been tested based on the new uh, cladding, uh, I mean this new standard BSA four one four, and passed, then it would be okay for you to use it. But in terms of uh, whether we we can advise or not, my answer is no uh, because. That one depends on a lot of factors, and I believe depends on the manufacturer, uh, the, the end product manufacturer themselves. Okay. We are panel manufacturer and I to test 414 part two. Do you have sample setup? Uh, uh, I think I think this one uh, we 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 can uh, definitely uh, take it offline because uh, this one you know you. If you have a drawing or you have something that you wish to discuss with us, then we can discuss uh, off the line. And I don't think it's uh, appropriate for us to discuss over here or the best method or platform to discuss over. Okay, uh, so the last, so today's last question, uh, let me just share. So the, uh, the question is, are the slides going to be shared after webinar? Uh, so yes, I will share this via our, uh, website and via our YouTube channel. So it will be shared in the video format, including my narration. So I uh, hope that format itself uh, will be able to uh, play. I mean, if you have more questions, uh, definitely uh, feel free uh, to, to approach us. Thank you. And uh, thanks for tuning in to another session of Still Connect.